This little ATV conversion? Almost killed me. It wasn't when I left skid marks to my shed or in my pants. And it, and it wasn't the time it tried to catapult me into my yard while pushing its limits. It was Kun Ray, an electric motor supplier on Amazon, that bled me of my vital resources. So much, we gotta keep it moving. We've got an exciting build to dive into. Welcome back to Matic Mods, YouTube's newest home of polished guides and pandemonium. In this video, I'll provide an overview of this 3000 watt conversion, hopefully provide some entertainment, in addition to inspiration and tips to build your own. This well-used Suzuki ATV was given to me by my neighbor. The engine needed to be rebuilt, which would have been too easy, so instead I gutted it down to the frame to kick off the project. I used two pieces of a quarter inch aluminum to create a sturdy motor mount. I mounted the motor so that its sprocket was in the same location as the original engine sprocket. The DC motor included an 11 tooth T8F sprocket, which was replaced with an 8 tooth 420 sprocket like the stock engine. I kept the stock 38 tooth drive shaft sprocket since I knew the DC motor made more power and torque than its 50cc counterpart. And while it makes more power, I'm stoked to note the stock weight was maintained. Both the combustion and the electrical motor systems weighed in at wow. 32 pounds. With the drivetrain out of the way, I attempted to extend an inexpensive battery bag to fit my 84 volt lithium battery. The material more preferred to rip than stretch, but I was happy enough with the results. This was installed onto a steel support I added for the battery before final wiring. Wiring is always my favorite part of the job and I added a few goodies to sweeten the pot. A master fuse and switch is never a bad idea. These were ran in series to deliver power to the controller. This cutoff switch was used for safety and aesthetics since it replaces the fuel cap, but this switch also helps you eliminate that nasty spark that makes you almost shit your pants each time you connect your battery. Other components that did not go into the final build are these engine block heaters. These were intended to remove moisture from the motor after a winter run. This Matty handlebar switch would make a great control cluster, but I used the original ignition for high-low lockout and the original start-stop for forward and reverse. And finally, my ignition was already integrated into my half-twist throttle that came with my kit. My ATV build was testing well in my garage, but because of my issues seen in my last update, it was only a matter of time before I had to replace the motor and controller kit. This is my final build today. You will notice a much larger 62 sprocket at the rear. This improves acceleration and brings top speed down to about 35 miles per hour. The inner bore of the sprocket did have to be enlarged, which was done accurately as possible without a drill press. And while I didn't think I needed a chain tensioner, I wasn't sure how loose the chain would become, so I added one for good measure. And that is the build. Now, let us go on our ride. If you want to see the better half of that fun run, I strongly recommend it. I do want to revisit this ATV soon, building on unused parts like that Maddie handlebar switch. I'll also be looking for some additional testing grounds and friendly competition for your entertainment. And in the meantime, I gotta know what you all think. Would you pay $900 for this build? What would you do differently? Would you like to see anything else, more of it? Let me know in comments below, support the new guy, and I'll see you next time.